I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at the Camping and Caravanning Club site at Sandringham, a bit of an old favourite of mine. And the vehicle I've brought is Swift's latest Voyager 494, part of their new 4 Series range. Now it's very on trend perhaps in having an island bed and a Ford Transit cab. Not so on trend though is the fact that in a market now dominated by low profile motorhomes, often with a drop down bed at the front, this one is an overcab or Luton bodied coach built. And also bucking the trend for ever higher prices, this is just 68,995. And that price is as you see it here. There's no luxury pack, no driver's pack, no blue sky pack. This is a standard spec motorhome with no options. The only factory option listed is an automatic gearbox. And this one is a manual. And for your 68,995, you get alloy wheels, a magnetic gray metallic cab with color keyed bumpers and even the fog lights are included. The engine is Ford's 2 litre 155 bhp turbo diesel and from Swift you get a body with their smart construction so GRP both on the inside and the outer skin as well. GRP under the floor and GRP on the roof. In fact this is completely wood free construction. It uses a polyurethane framework and polystyrene for the insulation. It comes with a 10 year water ingress warranty too. In terms of dimensions I suppose this is what you'd call a full sized motorhome. Length is 7.54 metres, just a smidgen longer than perhaps the average and of course it's a bit taller too with that over cab, 2.98 metres. In terms of width it's also just a fraction wider than the typical width at 2.37 metres. So let's take a look around the exterior of the Voyager and the first thing you might notice is that although it is an over cab model the Luton doesn't come as far forward over the windscreen as perhaps more traditional older over cab designs where often there was a considerable peak above the screen. You've got these nice chromed badges and the windows whilst they're not flush they don't bow out as far from the bodywork as some. You have got an external shower, just plug in this trimmer attachment and there's your external shower but that is cold water only so you might want to warn Fido so that he doesn't ring the RSPCA on you. Of course you've got your cassette toilet servicing hatch and your mains hook up there and then your vent for your Truma combi boiler and then at the back is the garage. Now there's no dropped floor level at the back of the motorhome so the doors to the garage are quite high about 69 centimeters off the floor and when you're lifting something quite heavy like this electric bike into the garage well that's something to consider. In terms of the garage dimensions just inside the door for a very limited space you've got headroom of 1.11 meters but that soon reduces at this point to 73 centimeters. Still plenty for folding bikes but not for full-sized non-folders. What else can I tell you? Well you've got four fixed tie-down points on the floor, a light at each end and I do like this very substantial looking frame that supports the bed above. There's a second large garage door, same size on the near side and here you've got mains 12 volt and USB sockets. Also interesting to see that you've got storage for the dining table in the garage. Now that's a great idea from the safety point of view but I'm not sure how many people are going to be bothered to take their table out of the dinette, walk it round, open the garage and stow it in there. 
the back of the motorhome is nicely styled too with this typical swift molded grp panel gives the back of the motorhome a bit of shape but it is all in one piece so don't bump it but you shouldn't because you've got a reversing camera and if you do want full-sized non-folding bikes the mountings for a two-lay rack are already in place now it's not just the price that's designed to appeal to first-time motorhomers because this Voyager is based on a 3,500 kilo chassis so you can you can drive it on a standard class B car license on that 3.5 ton chassis it has a payload of 412 kilos or 30 kilos less if you go for the automatic version now looking down the near side you've got your gas locker it is quite high for changing cylinders and they are one behind the other so that's slightly less convenient but you have got Truma's crash safe mono regulator so you can use your heating while you're driving and then one of the things that Swift has had to do to give you a decent payload at three and a half tons is to do away with the spare wheel so under the back where you might have expected to see one is your fresh water tank both tanks fresh and waste are underslung but both are heated and it's nice to see some insulation around the piping for the waste tank although not right at the very end at the tap capacities 110 litres for the fresh water under the back of the van and more centrally 85 litres for the waste tank there they both have these plastic drain taps that are a bit fiddly but well this is a sort of budget priced motorhome these days just by the door you've got your external barbecue point and then the habitation door itself well it is linked to Ford central locking but I have had a little trouble with it it doesn't always seem to want to lock you've got a brolly holder on the door a bin and of course a fly screen as well but best of all it's a nice low entrance into the van without any pressing buttons to extend a step as soon as you come into this Voyager 494 it feels spacious and I think part of that is down to the little bit of extra width but more it's down to the fact that you haven't got a side seat forward of the entrance instead you've got a, a cabinet of drawers it's a TV station too with aerial and uh, main sockets above so that gives you a wider floor area up front great if you've got a dog too um, and despite this being a very conventional continental style half dinette layout it does have some plus points now there's plenty of power for a start you've got main sockets on both sides up here above the cab you've got these nice reading lights as well you've got USB ports down under the bench and above in the base of the top lockers plenty of lighting and then well you haven't got the big um, over cab sunroof or hecky roof light in this area because of the shape of the over cab roof you've got a small clear roof vent to give you ventilation but uh, it's the headroom in this van which is huge that really makes a difference I think another factor is that you don't have to have the table in situ when it's out of the way this area does feel bigger but it also feels quite cosy because the side window is relatively small and there's no window forward of the door although there is a deep window in the door itself and of course you've got all the cab glazing this seat too has isofix which is important if you're going to carry little ones when it comes to meal times and it's certainly coming to mine well i'm quite impressed with this kitchen <coughs> It's not the biggest, but you have got extra worktop with this flap. And not only that, but you've got a cover for the sink that doubles 
as a chopping board or even a drainer and an inset bowl in the sink too. The Thetford Triplex Plus cooker has three gas rings, a combined oven and grill and a mains hot plate. But the thing I like perhaps most of all is that all the main storage is in drawers and they're good size drawers too. All soft closing and the top one has a cutlery holder. Over on the other side your 139 litre automatic energy selection fridge is one of these tall slim jobs that has loads of space and it also has a door that opens from either side. Top lockers, well, these are large too. In fact, this one actually feels almost as if it wastes some space because it's so tall, but it does include your plate and cup racks. Here can have a microwave fitted, that's a dealer fit option, but, well, I think you've got enough cooking facilities personally. As for this cupboard up here, well, <coughs> you're certainly gonna have to be tall to use that one. But that's the corollary of having this really generous headroom. That headroom in fact is 2.15 metres or over 7 foot, so you're going to have to be tall to bang your head in this van. I should also mention that there is a three pin socket in the kitchen. So that's conveniently placed to put any electrical appliances on the worktop flap. And I should also have mentioned that there's a 100 watt solar panel on the roof. Now with the table in place, well, it's a decent size and nice and sturdy. But if you're sitting in the swivel passenger seat, you'll struggle to reach because there's no fold out extension leaf. Opposite the kitchen, of course, is the washroom behind this sliding silver timbre door. Now, it's an all-in-one washroom, and it's not huge, but it does look modern and quite practical. You've got these nice sort of marble effect walls and this moulded unit that incorporates the mirror with some storage behind it. And then this glazed door with some more storage, but the shelves don't have any fiddle rails or straps or anything to keep things in place. A little bit of work top behind the basin and this folding basin design works really well. So much better than some of the ancient folding wash basins. I think go back to about 50 years BC that you see in some vans. When it comes to showering, well you've got a cover for your toilet roll. That's a neat little practical touch and you just slide the door across and that keeps things watertight. You don't need a shower curtain. Two drains in the tray so everything flows away nicely. It's not the biggest space for a shower and of course everything including the loo gets wet but well to quick mop down afterwards and for an all-in-one washroom it does work quite well. The only real downside is the height of the loo, which really does suit those with very long legs. It's an Eco Camel Jet Storm shower head too, so you get a decent power of shower without using too much water. But of course, the key part of this layout is the bedroom at the rear. You go up a small step into the bedroom and then you have the usual steps on either side of the island bed. Just remember that those are there if you go to the loo in the night. But this is perhaps, no, definitely the star feature of the 494. Firstly because it's got this exclusive Duvalet Duvalite 
Alto mattress with a platinum support layer, memory fiber and reflex foam. If all that sounds like gobbledygook, well, let me just tell you, it is supremely comfortable. It's a really, really good bed. Perhaps it's a shame it's not just a touch bigger. It's 1.83 meters or six foot in length, and that is to the middle. It's curved at the corners and 1.45 meters wide or four foot nine. But you have got unusually in an island bed motorhome, you've got plenty of room around the foot of the bed, even if you deploy the privacy screen. Now it's a shame perhaps that that isn't a proper sliding door, but it does at least mean that if someone is sleeping in the overcab bed, then the back bedroom is private. Of course, you've got bedside shelves on either side, you've got his and hers wardrobes on either side, and uh, you've just about got room to sit up too. And these neat little recesses on each side of the bed, that one with a main socket and this one with two USBs, so you can have your phone charging by your bedside. Roof light above for ventilation and a mirror at the foot of the bed so you can make sure that you're absolutely beautiful before you pull that screen back. And then at the foot of the bed on this side you've got a little storage cabinet, cabinet with a couple of drawers and you can mount another TV there if you wish. Also worth noting is that there's more storage under the foot of the bed. You do have to hold it up. It could do with a strut or a gas strut or something to support it, but that's a useful bit of extra stowage space. You've got yet another main socket over by the offside bedside table too, and a third wardrobe at the foot of the bed. Now it's not a huge wardrobe because the base of it is accommodating the gas locker, but still extra space for hanging your posh stuff. At this point it's very tempting to take a snooze on this lovely bed, but instead I want to remind you please subscribe to the channel, tick like on this video, and don't forget all our reviews are brought to you by MMM Magazine. This magazine is 50 odd years old, like me, and it's been the best magazine in motorhoming for all that time. You can subscribe to it on our website, outandaboutlive.co.uk. And now finally, we come to the raison d'etre of the Voyager 4 series, that over cab bed. Now, unlike a low profile with a drop down bed, it doesn't come down and take away your lounge area. One thing to remember though, is try and trap the foot of the ladder, because otherwise it'll disappear to the front of the Luton, and you'll need arms that telescopically extend to be able to reach it. But it's a simple enough job just to pull the bed down, retrieve the ladder and just hook it into place. And then up you go. Once up here you have a bed that's 1.91 meters long by 1.32 meters wide. Six foot three by four foot four. And actually you have got some wiggle room beyond the ends of the mattress on either end. You've also got just a single light at the head of the bed and an opening window at the foot. The only downside of course is of sleeping up here is the lack of headroom and it does decrease towards the front. So probably this is a bed best given over to the kids. And you'll also notice that although you're getting a nice duvalet mattress, it's on a solid wooden base. Oh, and you do get a net. so that the kids don't fall out. So just a few details to give you before we go for a drive. First of all, you've got this 
very simple control panel that shows your levels, battery condition and so on. And alongside that is your Truma heating control. Now the Voyager comes with Truma Combi 6, so the more powerful uh, combi unit, and it's the gas and mains electric one as well. Under the half dinette bench is your leisure battery, and that's an 80 amp hour leisure battery. And finally, another feature that's standard now on Voyager is the cab blinds. So, driving this Ford based Voyager. Well, you get all the toys air conditioning cruise control, driver and passenger airbags of course, and ESC with load adaptive and rollover protection as well. So it's, it's a fully specced base vehicle. The cab seats are good too, um, they've got uh, tilt adjustment on the squabs and adjustable lumbar supports. Door mirrors give a good view aft, and of course the central display, this 9 inch uh, Zenek touchscreen, well that becomes your reversing camera screen as well and gives you um, confidence when you're manoeuvring. On the road the 155 bhp engine has plenty of performance and well it's quite nice to have a manual gearbox for a change. Saves you £1,795 against the automatic but I guess probably the automatic will prove to be more popular in the long run. So there's plenty of performance from this engine and the gearbox is, is nice and easy to use. Um, when you start the vehicle um, you do need to uh, put your foot on the clutch to start it but other than that it's, it's a very straightforward vehicle to drive. Um, and then in terms of conversion noise, well very pleasingly there's almost nothing in the way of rattles from the furniture that is really good but we do have quite a bit of squeaking and creaking from various plastic mouldings I think and at speed you notice too that there seems to be some wind noise coming from the Luton. That's all I can put it down to. I, I thought at first it was road noise, but on, on second thoughts, I think it probably is wind noise and, and probably just from the, the shape of the Luton. Fuel consumption, um, well, prior to doing all our manoeuvring and so on for, for filming, um, we were getting about 28 miles per gallon. It's dropped now to just over 27, but that seems pretty reasonable for such a large vehicle and remember that this this particular example is brand spanking new so it should improve with age and usage. When we set out it was extremely windy and you could feel um, the vehicle being buffeted in crosswinds. I think this is about as big a body as I'd want on the Ford Transit. Not for performance reasons, but just with that softer suspension um, and the length of overhang and so on on this vehicle, I think it's about as big as I'd really want to go. But as I say, very easy, really pleasant vehicle to drive for a motorhome of this size. Now I've driven it a bit further and done a bit more research, I've actually had not second thoughts but third thoughts on that road noise and I think it is road noise not wind noise and I think it's coming from the step well because I've had that experience before with coach built motorhomes. Other than that on the driving front should tell you too that you've got cornering lights and start and stop so base vehicle spec is very good, in fact the spec of the whole motorhome is pretty good. 
the main thing that uh, most people will want to add will be a rollout awning. Um, so at 68995 well, as they say, the price is right. It might seem like a lot of money, but that is a very competitive figure for a motorhome like this in, 20, in season 2024. Final verdict? Well, I think the kitchen and the bedroom are the star features. The washroom, well, you've got to be able to live without a separate shower. And this lounge, well, it doesn't have a lot of seating capacity for a family of four. And this obviously is a four berth motorhome. If you can live with those aspects, then, well, it's got a nice modern feel about it. As I say, good value and a good spec. I hope you've enjoyed this latest motorhome review from MMM and our YouTube channel Motorhome Campervan. Please keep watching, keep subscribing, many more motorhome reviews coming along soon.